Craig Adams here from Wedding Film School, and this is episode 22 of the Q&A where I answer your questions. So if you've got one, post it in the comment section below. But I'm gonna answer some from the last episode, so let's do it. Gabrielle Marie, how many of you watch her YouTube channel? She makes some awesome videos, so definitely check them out. But if you wanna see some kind of collaboration, let me know what you think we should do in the comments below. Jonah, yeah, you'll notice that I'm testing out different picture profiles with each of these episodes. So they all look different uh, and how I shoot it and how I grade it. So uh, that's gonna help out the review, which is coming soon, Noba, I know. Noba Tech, awesome reviewer on uh, YouTube. Uh, does tech gear reviews and stuff like that. But yeah, the, the Sony a7S Mark II review, it's coming. Uh, I've been making you know pros and cons, my long list. I want it to be better than your average uh, we, uh, camera review video. So um, I'm gonna do it right. So it just needs a little more time. My favorite types of YouTube videos to watch, well, let's just take a gander at who I'm subscribed to. Apple, Bill Wirtz, Weird, comedian, uh, Casey Neistat with his vlogs, Chris Tuckman and Jeremy Johns, uh, movie reviewers, DSLR Guide, uh, Evan Breen, a Viner, hilarious, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk for business, Killian Experience makes really weird game uh, video game reviews, I love it. Last week tonight is like my politics, Marky Bron Lee, a cove, of course, you know, MKBHD, Matt, who is Matt Johnson, uh, very awesome wedding review videos and stuff like that. Miranda Sings, I'm a little embarrassed, but dude, I love her. She's great, great character on YouTube. Doing it, killing it. Nobatech, Sarah Dietschy, uh, Split Screens, my other video, uh, movie review channel, and then Star Wars, of course. I wanna create a film club for my high school, but I have no idea what we should do. Please help. Man, you should do this. I started an independent film class in high school and it was just me making videos by myself, but that was fun. I did way more stuff like that in college where I started uh, Silver Screen. So it was a, a weekly meetup for filmmakers or anyone with interest in videos where we would eat, of course, staple of any weekly gathering for a film club, uh, chat about you know cool stuff on campus, films, watch movies, but then also plan, write, and shoot uh, little short films, sketches, and things that we, we came up with. It's a great way to build out your portfolio, gain experience, and make friends. Um, there's really nothing stopping you. Just get the second person, just get another person that you wanna make movies with, start meeting every week, and then I guarantee you more people will come and it'll get better. This is the number one thing I think anyone starting out should be doing. You should be meeting every single week with like-minded other filmmakers and just making stuff. Just make whatever, it's super fun. Judy with just a Steadicam vest and arm for a whole wedding. Yeah, that would be crazy fun. I would do it. it would be interesting to just keep that on and just do my thing and like be a mech warrior at a wedding you know but anyone who's worn that stuff knows that it gets super tiring your back is gonna be dead after like a half an hour an hour with that thing man I don't think I could do it so a whole wedding that'd be tough but fun <laughs> Luke Skywalker Han Solo yeah I mm, I like Star Wars so any chance I can place a fictional character's name in something in one of these videos? Oh, I'll do it. I'm based in New York City. Yeah, I live in Brooklyn. I work this whole area. I even go to Jersey and Staten Island sometimes. Trust me, it's not that bad. Uh, but yeah, if any of you are in the city, because it's a fun place to visit, I totally recommend it, especially now in the spring with the blossoms. Everyone is out and everyone is happy. Any other season, people in New York City aren't that happy. So come now, visit, let me know, and we'll grab coffee. I'd love to hang out, and I, I wanna start doing some like monthly meetups where we can just all meet up at a certain place and chat. I think that'd be fun. Let me know if you want that. Okay, Jared Sheldon, with the question of the day. How much should I charge for my first wedding film, or should I even charge at all? So I get this question all the time, how much should I charge when I'm starting out? So I've talked about this a little bit, sparsely before, where if you're like a filmmaker with a studio with experience coming from another city, starting somewhere new, uh, I recommend bridal shows because you can get one or two awesome clients and then go from there and build a referral base. Me, I had someone in my, I was a high school senior, someone came to me, they're like, I'll give you $200, yeah, to shoot the wedding. A wedding all right well I guess I'll shoot it so I had no expectations but I did it and then just got more clients from there 
but if you're starting out, um, the first three weddings are super important. You don't have a portfolio, so this first wedding really should be for free or for super cheap for a family or friend, someone who trusts you already just because blood relative or something cool like that. But notice how we broke it down to trust. After you blow this first wedding out of the water, shoot it, make it awesome, do it. You've got your first wedding film to show people. So you post that online, some other wedding couple, someone engaged is like, I want that for my wedding. So they contact you, they're like, how much do you charge for a wedding video like that? And you'd be like, thousand dollars and you'll get a wedding film like this so it comes down to trust you build that trust to begin with with your sample this first wedding film setting expectations building trust with the client because they don't want to give their money out to anyone they want to trust who they're giving it to so they see this wedding film they're like okay he can make that for us the second part comes down to your person you personality so are you fun to work with? Do you meet with them in person or on Skype? Are you on time? Is your communication good? If they send you an email, like, do you respond back immediately? Are you helpful? So something that Gary Vaynerchuk talks about is providing 51% of the value in any relationship you have so that you have leverage over the other person. Healthy leverage, yeah, healthy leverage over someone else because you're providing more than you're taking. So in every single wedding, you should be do, trying to do a better job than what they expect and providing 51%. But for these first three weddings, super important that you just kill it, own it, dominate it. And then it's like a tango, a waltz between the trust from the client and your price. So you charge a thousand for the second wedding, you kill it, you own it, everything's good, You you just own all of the promises that you've made. The third wedding, another couple comes to you, they're like, we want that, how much do you charge? You'd be like, a thousand and a half dollars. So you'll get this wedding film and you'll also get me, hello, I am a professional small business owner. We're gonna make all of your dreams come true Come true because I'm providing 51% of the, the value. Um, so if you do, a good job, you do the wedding film and you're creating good content and then you're also a great professional who shows up on time and communicates well and makes people happy and provide value, you should be saying no to 50% of the people who come to you. Having people who say no is healthy when you're doing these things correctly because that means you're growing. You should be stepping up your price. Did you see how we went from like free to $200 to like a thousand at the second wedding and then to the third, like a thousand and a half. It goes up, you kind of have to test your market and what you can do. Um, but if everyone is saying, if you're doing, if you're making good work, if you're being a professional and 100% of the people who come to you are saying yes and you're booking them, that's wrong. You should, you're not charging enough. You need to start charging more money for these weddings because I would say 50% is kind of healthy. 50% of the people who say no. How much do you pay your second shooters? Yeah, I'd say right now for this season in New York City, for me, my studio, I would say 50 to $70 an hour is kind of what I want my second shooter to be. I want them to be a person that could be a first, but is, you know, acting as a second for the shoot. I want. I would rather have a very strong second shooter than an okay second and an okay third. Is it hard working with a photographer that has a second or third shooter? So yeah, you're gonna work with photo teams and the less that you see this as a problem, uh, the better off you'll be. Here's the secret, you can help each other. <laughs> Some of my best weddings have been because I'm friends with the photographer. And it makes such a difference. You never look at the situation as like, they're doing this to me. Always be like, what can I do to help the situation? How can, what can I do to go out of my way to help solve any problems? Uh, and you'll be better off. Uh, it's so important. Reach out to them, show that you care, that you respect what they do. You're both doing the same thing in different ways. So why not help each other? Everybody be asking about my computer. I'll do a review. How about that? We'll do a review of my editing computer. Has anyone disliked my music choices? So yeah, like if I, I've never had a wedding film that I've delivered and when they've like emailed me, they're like, we hate that song, redo it. If they did it, that that's strange to me, you know? Uh, I've never had that happen. I kind of use similar music. I'm very like instrumental and like very cinematic. 
strings and, and I'm not like the, the pop song lyric kind of shooter and editor, so they come to expect that. So if I switch it up on them, yeah, I might get some emails like that, but uh, anyone who edits knows that if you make like a six minute film and you use two or three songs in it, you can't just take a song out and replace it. It's so like weaving in, woven into the edit that you can't just do that. So <clears throat> I'd probably charge for more editing. It would take hours of work. So yeah, I would definitely charge. Should you shoot raw with a 6D or 5D Mark III? I tried it. I know I talked about it a lot in the past. I wouldn't recommend shooting raw with the raw video with Magic Lantern. Just, it's not worth it. What is your typical setup for filming the gift exchange? Yeah, I'm usually by myself because I'll be covering bride stuff. My second will be with the guys. I do like to have some kind of shot showing the relationship that they are in two different spots usually. Uh, so like the gift coming this way and then the other gift going that way, some creative way. So always make sure it's the best atmosphere for shooting. So if there's music, I'll turn it down low enough or off. I'll place her in a good spot for window lighting or whatever the situation warrants, you know. I want it to play out, but I'll just put her in a spot and then let it happen. Um, I want the emotion first. So I want the face, the eyes, um, anything she says. So I'll usually be on a monopod up close, but still away far enough so that the photographer can do their thing. Uh, and then I'll stay in one spot with the mic, the video mic pro on top of the camera, directly at her just to get any dialogue or anything that happens, keeping the face shot. Um, if I need to in that moment, I'll quickly get you know her unwrapping uh, real quick, like you know those shots if I need it, and then go back up. But I still have the audio. I'm just doing one long roll. And then if I if I I'm always looking around. If I see a good reaction, I'll just pivot get two or three seconds and then go back. You know, those reactions are tough uh, to, to make up afterwards. But everything else you can fake. You can fake her opening, reading the card. You don't have to like get all those different shots at that point. So the stuff that I can do later, I will for sure do later. Are you forever scarred of witnessing so many weddings that you're reluctant to get married yourself? I'd like to get married someday. Uh, it's gonna be very interesting because I am so jaded. I've seen hundreds of weddings. I've attended so many and I do have strong opinions when it comes to them. But it's not entirely up to me now, is it? <laughs> I'm not gonna make all the decisions for the wedding, so it's up to her as well. So Clay shot two weddings, got 12 more referrals, and booked every single one, asking if he should do solo or book two to three shooters. It's up to you, what do you wanna do? Do you, like, you could totally shoot all 12 of those weddings by yourself and kill it, you know, do an awesome job. You just have to set that expectation that it's gonna be a solo type of, t solo type coverage. It's not gonna to have tons of different camera angles during the ceremony of the speeches, but you can totally own single cam coverage and make an awesome film. I shoot them all the time, I see them done quite well. It's up to you, you know, you don't have to have two or three shooters. Um, it's more of a headache starting out. It takes some time to get used to shooting two to three person teams for a wedding. Um, but once you get into it, it can be pretty good. Yeah. I'd recommend starting slowly though. Have a second shooter and then work from there. Okay, so that'll it. Thank you guys so much. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, post them below and we'll tackle them in the next episode. Until then, thank you for watching. See ya.